Samsung's next big chip, the Exynos 2600, you know, the one that's supposed to power the Galaxy S26 series coming next year? I was scrolling through some leaks last night, and man, my jaw just dropped. Samsung's actually dialing back the speeds on this thing. Yeah, they're underclocking the CPU cores right before mass production kicks off. At first, I was like, what? Why would they do that? Is this a step back? But the more I dug in, the more I think this is straight up smart, like really smart. Let me break it down for you super simple because I know not everyone's a tech nerd like me. So picture this. A few weeks ago, we got our first real peek at the Exynos 2600 through Geekbench scores on a prototype phone. It looked beastly. We're talking a 10-core setup, one super-fast prime core clocked at 3.8 gigahertz, three solid performance cores at 3.26 gigahertz, and then six chill efficiency cores at 2.76 gigahertz. The scores? Single core hit 3,309. That's how zippy it feels for everyday stuff like scrolling or opening apps. And multi-core? A whopping 11,256, which means it could crush multitasking, gaming, all that heavy lifting. I was hyped, thinking finally Samsung's Exynos is going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Qualcomm's Snapdragon monsters. But boom. Fresh leak drops, and it's like Samsung hit the brakes. Now the prime core is down to 3.55 gigahertz, those performance cores to 2.96, and efficiency ones to 2.46. Single core score slips to 3047, multi to 10,025. Not a total nosedive, but yeah, it's slower on paper. I felt this little pang of disappointment at first, you know? Like, come on, Samsung, we want max power. But then I stopped and thought about their track record. Every time they push these Exynos chips too hard, remember the S20 Ultra or even some S23 models? They overheat like crazy. Phones turning into hand warmers during a quick game session? That's the worst. It kills battery life, throttles performance, and just makes you want to chuck the thing across the room. I've been there, guys. It's frustrating as heck. And here's the thing that makes me go, okay, this is genius. They're doing this tweak right as they're about to start cranking out millions of these chips on their brand new two nanometer process. That's tiny, super efficient tech that should help with power draw anyway. But why risk the heat issues again? Lower clocks mean less heat buildup, less power guzzled, which translates to way better battery life and cooler temps. Imagine gaming on your S26 for hours without it feeling like a fever dream. That's the dream, right? Samsung's basically saying, we learned from the past. No more meltdowns. Oh, and get this, they're throwing in this cool new feature called a heat path block, or HPB for short. It's like a dedicated highway for heat to escape during those intense moments, like editing videos or running AI stuff. Paired with liquid cooling in the phone itself? Yeah, they're ramping that up too. It should keep everything stable and smooth. No more random slowdowns or phone too hot warnings popping up mid-match. I mean, if you've watched my older videos on Samsung's overheating fixes, you know I've been begging for this. They listened, or at least it feels that way. Now, let's talk real-world vibes, because specs are cute, but what does this mean for you and me? Even with these dialed-back speeds, that multi-core score around 10,000, that's still plenty to emulate PC games or even Nintendo Switch titles right on your phone. Think about it. Running Zelda or some indie Steam hit at solid frames? No laptop needed. On the S26, it'd be buttery. And single core still over 3,000, so apps fly, browsing's instant. Samsung's not skimping, they're just making it reliable. Plus, word is, their neuroprocessing unit, the brain for AI tricks like photo editing or voice stuff, beats Qualcomm's latest Snapdragon Elite Gen 5 by a solid 30%. That's huge. So in Europe and some other spots, where you'll get the Exynos version of the S26, you might actually have an edge on smarts over the Snapdragon ones hitting the US, Japan, or China. I gotta be honest, this whole move has me feeling optimistic in a way I haven't in years about Samsung chips. They've been playing catch-up forever, but underclocking like this? It's them showing they mean business, prioritizing a phone that lasts all day, stays cool, and doesn't leave you cursing at a brick? Yes, please. No more great-on-paper, trash-in-hand stories. If they nail the rest, like that 2 nanometer magic and the HPB working hand-in-hand -hand with liquid cooling, we're looking at the most balanced flagship Samsung's ever dropped. What do you guys think? Is this a win for smarter design, or are you bummed about the raw speed dip? Drop your takes in the comments. I read every one. 
And if you're hyped for S26 rumors, smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss my deep dive when more leaks hit. We're so close to seeing this thing shine. Talk soon.